This video is brought to you by the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series. And by the Roll for Combat Actual Play podcast and their new Agents of Edgewatch adventure. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today we're rounding out our Nolzer's Wave 12 unpainted mini coverage with the larger minis in the set. Wave 12 is color-coded. Here we have some of the minis with a yellow background and some with a red one. These let you know the price. The yellow ones have an MSRP of $8.99 and the red ones have an MSRP of $14.99. All these figures are available now. Many thanks to WizKids for sending us these to review. So, no time to waste, let's open them up and take a closer look. This manticore may look familiar. He or she was featured in the first paint night kit from WizKids. If you want to get a kit with paints and brushes and an instructional video on how to paint this figure, check out our review of that set by clicking the eye in the corner of your screen. This set seems to be available in several retail outlets now, or you can just get this mini and paint it up yourself. Manticores are CR3 amalgamation monstrosities with their stat block and the basic rules. Speaking of the Paint Night kit, this ogre zombie was featured in their second kit, which we just reviewed recently in a video you can see, again, in that link in the corner of your screen. As I explained there, the ogre zombie is a fantastic monster for those horror-themed games for a group of low-level characters. He's easy to hit, but keeps coming, keeps swinging, and he just doesn't go down. He is a CR2 creature with a stat block and the basic rules. We've reviewed a couple of Nelfeshni demons here at the Gallant Goblin, and with good reason. Nelfeshnis are remarkably challenging monsters. While they look like big brutes with undeveloped wings, they're actually highly intelligent, with an intelligence score of 19, which makes them just a little bit under Laurel Silverhand and Strahd von Zorovich. Their wings are functional, allowing them to fly, albeit a bit slowly, into the middle of battle, but they can also just teleport once per turn. They have a ton of resistances and hit like a truck. They have a CR 13 stat block in the basic rules. We don't really have any modern Gorgon minis that I can think of, so this is a great one to pick up. Gorgons are large monstrosities who are covered in iron plating. They are unintelligent animals who have a petrifying gas attack that they can use to turn a foe to stone. They can then smash their prey to rubble and eat them up with their strong teeth. A formidable foe. They have a CR5 stat block and the basic rules. All you really need for this mini is a gun metal paint and a green thin downed wash, so it should be very simple to paint. A Gorgon appears in Rise of Tiamat and Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Let's talk about three fairly classic Underdark D&D creatures who we do have some painted minis for. First, the Hook Horror. These fellas live in the caverns of the Underdark where you can hear their hooks constantly scraping up against the walls. They have the head of a vulture and the body of a beetle and, of course, powerful arms that end in jagged hooks. And they are accustomed to the dark so they can locate their prey through echolocation. Their CR3 stat block is in the Monster Manual. Our next classic Underdark creature is the Cloaker. When I first heard the name Cloaker, I assumed it was able to turn itself invisible, but clearly I've just been watching too much Star Trek. The name actually comes from the fact that when it's lying motionless, it looks like a dark leather cloak. A great way to lure some prey in closer. It can also create illusory duplicates of itself, making it harder to hit. And it can wrap itself around the head of a creature to suffocate it. So this creature can make for a quite fun and challenging Underdark encounter. It has a CR 8 stat block in the basic rules. Our third classic Underdark creature is the Roper. These tricky predators look just like stalagmites or stalactites. And they just sit patiently until suitable prey comes within reach. And they aren't picky with what they eat. Just imagine your adventuring party skulking through the Underdark when several tendrils suddenly wrap around the waist of your companions, suddenly whipping them up toward the ceiling and into the waiting jaws of this large monstrosity. That's what you get with these CR5 ropers. Their stat block is in the basic rules. Next, we have a pair of trolls, those regenerating menaces. The first is a so-called raging troll. Now, there is no stat block that I can find called a raging troll. This appears to be a regular troll who just happens to be rather angry. 
Plus, there's a pre-existing Troll Mini out there in the Nolzers line, so they probably didn't want to give the two products the same name. Now, the main thing with Trolls is that they can heal themselves after each turn, even after death, unless burned with acid or fire. If you don't have access to either of those, then I recommend running. Trolls have a CR5 stat block in the basic rules. Now, maybe someone tried to kill a troll by exposing it to massive doses of poison. Well, as I said, the only way to kill a troll is with acid or fire. So these so-called venom trolls have poison just leaking from their pores, making them even more dangerous. They can deal poison damage with their regular attacks, of course. But also, whenever you're standing close and slash at it, you'll get a poison spray to the face. And it can even slice itself open to spray everyone nearby with poison. This raises its CR to 7, and the Venom Troll has a stat block in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. Our last 899 mini is the Bone Naga. We also haven't had a painted Bone Naga mini in recent times. Nagas are spellcasters, serpentine creatures who come back from death and who are often in conflict with the Yuan-Ti, who see themselves as the epitome of snake evolution. In response to this conflict, Yuan-Ti necromancers managed to disrupt the Naga resurrections and transform them into these Bone Nagas, who are undead and under the Yuan-Ti's control. Bone Nagas have a CR of 4 and have a stat block in the Monster Manual. You'll find Bone Nagas in Dungeon of the Mad Mage and Tomb of Annihilation. Now let's look at our big minis. These are, again, $14.99 and have a red background on the packaging. Let's start with our diving griffin. Now we have a few griffin minis. We have a standing griffin from a previous wave of Nolzer's minis. We have a griffin with a pretty cape from the Theros set, a griffin with a rider from Dragon Heist, and a flying griffin from Elemental Evil, though he has one of those flying pegs that I don't really care for. So here we have a nice, large, flying griffin that you can paint up as you like. This one comes on a large base, which is true to its stat block. It has a CR2 stat block in the basic rules. Here's our huge based impressive Storm Giant Mini. This is an unpainted version of the rare mini from Monster Menagerie 3. This is a great alternative because that mini is currently selling for over $40 by itself. Storm Giants are spell casting, chaotic good, contemplative but tempestuous and aloof seers. They certainly can serve a memorable role in a campaign, either as a patron, an ally, or an antagonist for an adventuring party. They feature prominently, as you might imagine, in Storm King's Thunder. They have a CR 13 stat block in the basic rules. Finally, we have our giant ape, a unique sculpt for this series. What a great creature to scare the crap out of your adventuring party as they wander through the jungle. Now, according to the CR7 stat block and the basic rules, this is not Grodd. This is a relatively unintelligent beast with a lot of hit points and super strong fists. But if you want to make him a telepathic and telekinetic Grodd type supervillain, then I'm all for it. This mini is amazing and I can't wait to paint it. This wave of Nolzer's minis includes a nice combination of new, unique minis and unpainted versions of previously released painted minis from the Icons of the Realms line. These are affordable, more easily available since they aren't in blind boxes, and customizable. If you're intimidated by the idea of painting your own minis, check out my review of the Paint Night kits to see what you can do with no innate artistic talent at all, just like me. There are a lot of unpainted minis out there, so if you're looking for a particular mini or sets of minis, be sure to check out what unpainted minis are available. It's a great way to fill in your warbands or to get hard to find creatures like the giant ape and the gorgon. Let me know what you think of this set in the comment section down below. Now that we've finished reviewing Wave 12, finally, be aware that Wave 13 is just around the corner and it has some really interesting choices. We've got some Eperon inspired PCs, multi-class PCs like a fighter, wizard, and a cleric wizard. We've got new dragon wormlings, alhoons and intellect devourers, genie and afridi and giant constrictor snakes and garistros. As soon as we get our hands on those, we'll start to share them with you. For now, I want to thank our sponsors for the video. First, we have the Roll for Combat Actual Play Podcast, officially licensed by Paizo. Now, I've talked about their excellent new adventure, The Agents of Edgewatch, and their circus-themed three-ring adventure series, but today, I wanted to specifically draw your attention to their playthrough of The Fall of Plaguestone, which is a great introduction to the Pathfinder 2nd Edition rule set. The adventure itself is short and self-contained, making for satisfying listening, and their playthrough is roleplay-heavy 
heavy, which is something that I really enjoy. If you want to get a taste of Pathfinder 2E, which I personally love, I highly recommend checking out Roll for Combat's Fall of Plaguestone Adventure, available on your podcasting app of choice and on RollForCombat.com. And many thanks to our friends at the Deck of Many. Their big bad booklet series is a monthly zine about boss monsters for 5th edition D&D. The booklet details boss monsters for you to use in your adventures. You get stat blocks, layer information, new mechanics, minion stat blocks, story hooks, role-playing guides, and everything you need to run a fun session or mini campaign with your gaming group. This month, come meet Gix, a giant vulture with a habit of collecting the bones of legendary heroes. Will your skeleton end up in his sprawling ossuary? Find out by subscribing today at BigBadBooklet.com. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed our unpainted mini-series. We're looking forward to sharing more of these with you in the coming months. If you enjoyed the video, you can help us out by clicking the little thumbs up button down there, subscribing to the channel, and joining us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We just passed 10,000 subscribers, so thank you for your continued support. As we grow in subscriptions, we hope to expand our coverage and keep improving our quality. We we always welcome your suggestions and feedback, so please feel free to reach out to us in the comment section down there. For now, have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.